Hello, Ray Lee with Speedboat Magazine here with another episode of the Boats and Bros podcast. And I don't know if you remember us, but it's been a while since we've been on. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking and we're like, when was the last one? And it was like, man, marathon, Rusty's wedding. and What Rusty's wedding? Uh, yeah, early Rusty's May. wedding and basically the week after marathon. So there's been... I don't know how many races, three races since then and many events. So, yeah, so many go yeah, back and recap that stuff. We're halfway through the year, right? It's 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 coming into July and uh, there's been a lot going on. So let's just jump right into it. Myra, you guys have been on fire literally. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That and video went out today or yesterday. <laughs> We've had a million views on it. That has to be like the most I've ever seen out of one of our videos. I mean, just, I mean, super quickly too, right? Just yeah, skyrocketed. Yeah. One yeah. day, uh, it might've went out. No, I think it was pretty much yesterday yesterday. Maybe the day before, but anyway, mm -hmm. I looked at it today on Facebook and it was a 1.1 million. And then, uh, on Instagram, it was over a, or right at a hundred thousand. So that's great. Anyway. So, yeah. So for people cool. that don't know what we're talking about, it's, it's a video of an onboard cockpit video of you and Johnny in Cocoa Beach. Cocoa Beach. Yeah. 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 It smells like something's burning. You smell that? Yeah. What's our water pressures look like? 10 pounds. Something is burning. See the smoke coming out? Where? Down here. Oh, it's something. Something shorted out through the carbon and making our... The, the sea deck's catching fire. So we got to short it through the carbon somehow. Tyler, you copy? It's not like on fire, but it's smoking. We copy. You guys do, you guys do whatever keeps you safe. Well, we don't want to catch your boat on fire. Yeah. So basically in the video, I was explaining to the guys in the shop today that the video, you know, portrays it. Everybody's attention span anymore is like 30 seconds. So if that, yeah. Uh, yeah. If that, yeah. But like, I think they say that most videos that are like 10 seconds long are the, the hits or seven right. seconds or something like, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, three. so, so that video is based over 45, 50 minutes because the smell started happening in this video at uh hit about the milling circle so you're coming out in the in uh when you're in cocoa beach excuse me i've been drinking beer uh we've been you idle out of the uh the cut where like all the spacex and all the all that stuff's going on there at the cape canaveral port i think it's what it's called so it's about a two mile idle and then the course is four so it's about five miles to get out there and we had tested the boat on uh saturday and all that and we get to the milling circle and Johnny is like literally the video. He says, something's burning. And I, I, initially my thought is always shut the blowers off because we have the, these four fans blowing on us and they are the most probably temperamental things that could catch on fire that you would smell quickly. So, uh, you know, immediately shut off the blowers and that, that, that the video didn't portray that. And then it was like, uh, well, I still smell it. Turn the blowers back on. I'm sweating. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so in the milling circle and we're like, man, and it is a raunchy smell. I mean, that, uh, Marine mat or sea deck, uh, whatever was catching on fire is like burnt rubber. And we're in a cockpit that is, I don't know. I don't know the square footage or cubic feet, but it ain't much. You're touching, big, yeah. you're touching the wall with one shoulder and you're touching the other guy with your other shoulder, you know? Right. So it's like, uh, it, it doesn't take much smoke in there for it to be overwhelming. And, uh, so basically we're like, well, you know, all the gauges look good and, uh, whatever's, you know, on fire or whatever smoking isn't, you know, that bad to where we can't see or it's burning our eyes. I mean, it was burning our noses and our, you know, just your, all your senses pretty sure. bad, but then we get about lap, I don't know, four or five. And uh, Johnny actually sees the little chimney of smoke coming out of the floor. And he's like, and that's what you see in the video for a second. You see it go 
uh, you see it come out and he goes there it is and i'm like what you know i'm like how in the world is the middle of the floor on fire and because that's literally what it is, is there's no electrical wires or anything like that and through my experiences through basically just a lot of carbon fiber pleasure boats and things like that if a positive wire touches the carbon fiber it'll run through the strands and the carbon fiber in the boat until it finds a ground and then it starts to get hot at that point so you know this carbon fiber that's in the boat is conductive so it wow. found the bolt that is on the escape hatch and just started getting that bolt hot enough to where it was uh to where it was melting the sea deck and uh yeah so my brain i can see in the video and i remember seeing it i go and i actually felt better about it because yeah it's like i got it, it's not like a main engine harness is grounded out and gonna make it all the way to the you know up here with us right and you know like so i know it's something close to us that is rub through and uh so we get to the race and and then in in the uh the video also it portrays us as like hey it's all yours my get it done or just something johnny says something like that yeah and but i mean but this is like 14 laps later or something like that to where that happens and uh <laughs> anyway it, it ended up being the wire that goes to the throttle. So you have a trim switch on, you can see Johnny's hand in the video too. He runs a trim switch on his middle finger as he's holding the throttles and the power wire that goes to that trim switch uh, had just barely chafed and on one of the seat brackets and was touching the seat bracket. And it wasn't enough amperage draw to blow the fuse but it was enough amperage to go through <laughs> the uh through there and catch the bolt uh or the sea deck on fire through a bolt in the in the escape hatch on the on the boat which is crazy that that's that, that's insane right like the, the yeah, chances yeah. there are so minuscule but the thing that 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 caught my attention immediately is the two veterans in the cockpit and Johnny smells it and asks you if you can smell it. And you said, yeah. And then you guys kind of diagnose it, you know, within yeah. the, in the span of the video. I mean, you said it, it's yeah, gone it seems really further. quick in the video, but hey, I mean, and in, in, in my mind, I'm like, oh shit, what is it? You know, in the cockpit and I'm running through, well, you can see me go to Johnny, what's our water pressures. And he's like, you can see him squint down there. He goes 10. Oh like, well. yeah engine's not on fire you know that it's not it's not some water and, th and that's way worse that that was the the whole sarasota incident last year was a uh, lack of water and that's when you're melting rubber and stuff off the exhaust and the engine and stuff like that so it could be much worse but electrical fire is also bad uh but it was kind of in an isolated area away and it wasn't like the wire the wire was barely even had a nick in it Oh, wow. uh, but it was enough to, you know, run this current down to this area to where, and I don't know what it takes to catch sea deck on fire, but you know, it was probably, if you put a lighter under, it's going to melt. So it was less than a lighter, but when you're <laughs> in this little confined area with lack of, you know, great ventilation yeah, and then, you know, just the stress of getting through the race when everything runs perfect, let alone going through the race, like, oh man, that's and you could hear in the video me say to Tyler, and it was kind of like an oxymoron when we did it. It was like, Tyler, do you copy? I mean, do you hear us talking about the boat smoking in here? And he's like, yeah, just do whatever's safe. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, so we're going 120 miles an hour out of yeah. control into this turn. And he's telling us to do whatever <laughs> makes you safe. Yeah. And so Johnny, was Johnny like, goes, well, I don't want to burn your boat down. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to burn your boat down. And it's like, and then afterwards when we talked to him, he's like, yeah, I, I was hoping you guys weren't going to stop, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yeah. And, and that's one of the comments I've always made about having a team owner uh, in the boat makes it easier to make these decisions, you yeah, know, right, like yeah. having Tyler in there and, you know, I can hear my dog downstairs. Just sounds like murder scene. But anyway, it's, uh, can you hear? <laughs> no. Okay, good. As long as you can't hear, because it sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's like them. If you ever see any of them Frenchy pages to where them dogs are just going nuts, that's exactly what's happening right now. 
but the the whole having a team owner in the boat is is a good feeling because then they can make the decision, you know, because right. at the point that you have their, you know, awesome whip out there and, you yeah. know, you're just, you're, you're, you're running your hardest, but anyway, yeah. So and, the, and the feedback is immediate. You look over yeah, at it. Yeah. It's like, Oh, we got to do this. Hey man, like, what do you want us do you, to do? Do you copy? <laughs> <laughs> copy, copy boats on fire. Tyler, come in, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler. He, and you know, he's like, yeah, I don't care if it's on fire. Just keep going. You know, it's right. what he wants to say. Yeah, but it can't yeah. be that bad, right? <laughs> yeah, because he knows everything's being recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. funny how little of that just just with the old uh, peeing out the escape hatch thing is how that's you know you remember how much I think about things being recorded and not much, but I ain't gonna dribble. The GoPros are on. Look at my little dick. Right. Uh, yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. Well, but that being that, said, that was, yeah. yeah. All Cocoa that aside, Beach. I mean, yeah, that started from the the beginning of the race to the end uh, when you guys took the checkered flag. You guys ended up winning anyway. Yeah. I mean, with all that going on. Yeah. It's, it was uh, Gray Dow got under them. They kind of ran it long in the uh, the south turn took a couple flyers and we were able to get on them and of course dirty money our arch nemesis this year was right there pushing us yeah and uh we were able to hold them off and there's been some pictures that people sent me after the race that are just phenomenal to where them guys were out of control trying to catch us you know just just like us and yeah i mean literally like 30 degree angles with the boat trying trying their best to to get up on us and i could feel them being close like four or five seconds you know sometimes even less and uh yeah able to get away with the win and uh happy about that so in coco beach uh you had fill in uh throttle in, in both boats class one yeah. boat and supercat johnny being in the supercat with you and class one you had steve curtis how yeah, was that i mean i mean talk about you know what do they do when you pinch me you know am i yeah. am i dreaming you know i get johnny tomlinson and steve curtis as my throttleman's in the same yeah. day right both like you know potentially probably the two goats of it there if there was a if there was a you know a top five definitely them two guys would be in the list as a best of all time and uh yeah it was fun uh the class one boat and the rough didn't do as great as we wanted to do just because there's still more changes. It did better than it had been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were still a few seconds off, uh, especially, uh, DeFalco and, uh, anyway, but they had, they had a water something failure. I think they had a, a plug come out or something like that. But that, that being said, the, uh, Oh, that's why she's so loud. She's right there. I'm going to let her in so I can actually okay. hear. So you guys, while he lets the dog in, uh, be prepared for another episode of Fun with the Coils. Let's see if it happens. Sorry about that. I mean, All it, good. Was, it was annoying. Yeah. But yeah, so the uh, Steve Curtis being in the boat, I mean, and then, you know, in racing against DF Young and and uh Johnny and Morpheus uh you know it was it was and it it was unbelievable uh we ended up in third place uh shortest boat in the fleet and it was pretty bumpy there not not that it was too bumpy for that particular boat but uh for our first race and uh first time we were ever in the boat together uh steve and i and you know to come out with a podium finish was good uh you know even after the uh qualifying and all that i think we qualified third but it was like a hundredth of a second or a tenth of a second behind yeah. some beside somebody but yeah so uh 
yeah, happy with the podium there. Being with Steve was pretty much unbelievable. The the comment that uh, that we we figured out a lot better at the end of the race, maybe in the last six laps, is you know how to run the trim better. And we even we since then we've actually changed trim pumps because they were so fast uh, to move the uh, to move the whatever the service drives. The trim pumps have to move more fluid. We actually used those particular uh, trim pumps to run the number sixes, but it made the number sixes move so quickly that it was hard to really fine tune them. And Steve was, you know, having trouble because he made go, man, I just barely hit it. And it, you know, the, on the vessel view and the Garmin and all the, the uh, Motec uh, information, it was like moving in five, 5%. So, we, that was something that we actually learned in that race to, you know, take to change the pumps to where they were slower. So it would be easier on the throttle, man. But, uh, the last four laps, he never lifted. He says he don't, he doesn't think that he's ever done that in a race to where literally a hundred percent throttle the whole time and just, uh, running the trim button. And wow. I mean, that's saying something for those Mercury 1100s. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, no question. Like right. it's, it's just to see all that boost being dumped to him that whole time, you know, for basically, I don't know, four laps times five, like 25 miles of, you know, literally wide open throttle. And, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it was good. Uh, and, and Steve is very good. I mean, it was my first time ever racing with him, but uh, it was a good deal. He actually gave me kudos. He goes, well, you know, I've always uh, I've always heard that you were a good driver, but he goes, Verdict did it, it, verdict's in, you're pretty good, you know, and <laughs> that's, kind of, that's pretty neat after the race. That's awesome. and he's literally, I didn't, he didn't. He goes, well, you're just going to have to drive it because the only reason, only way we're catching him is uh, by not lifting. So I'm like, okay, here we go, <laughs> you know. And he would just put me in the turns hot. And Did that make actually, for a wild we, ride? Yeah, for the, for the first, uh, from our first couple laps to the end laps, we were about six seconds a lap faster. So wow. by by not lifting and, you know, just running it so aggressively with the trim and just keeping in the boost, it, it was that much faster. So yeah, it was a wild ride. I mean, there was times and I'm, I'm I'll always admit like easy, 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 you know, like you're seeing <laughs> the sky for, I don't know how long seconds, yeah. lo long periods of time to where you're like, man, I hope this thing comes down. But you know, we were, <laughs> we were constantly working with the weight in the boat, even from testing and of course, you know, testing was pretty calm and we were really confident and then qualifying was pretty calm. And then we go out on race day and it gets rougher. So, uh, similar to Cocoa beach, no, I mean, Cocoa beach, and then similar to, uh, in ocean city, Maryland and the super cats. Yeah. Well, we caught up with you that morning when you and Steve were doing the, the, the dunker tests and, and, uh, you guys seem very comfortable in, in that little oh, rig. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Steve. I mean, he, he looks over at me, he goes as many times as I've been over, I should have a lifetime pass at this, you know? <laughs> and I was like that, I mean, you have a legit argument there, you know? I mean, it was funny. And then, and then we're, you know, us being a bunch, couple of jokesters, it was, it was pretty funny when, we went over and then we're, you know, swimming away from the simulated wrecked boat, but you got to pretend it's your boat, you know, to try right. to get the whole effect. And then, uh, Tyler sitting there on the, uh, on the, uh, pool wall deck. or the edge of the pool looking at us. <laughs> and we're like, okay, now avoid eye contact with the team owner. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's what you got to do. Avoid eye contact because, <laughs> That's what you're going to do if you wreck their boat. <laughs> right. Especially and Tyler. Think, He'll give me in a headlock. And I think you uh, you hollered out um, Steve Curtis's motto, uh, win or swim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pins out. Win or Win or swim. <laughs>
2005 or 2006, uh, I was a crew member. I don't even think I was a driver. I think I was a crew member and I had like a dress Bacardi silver shirt on maybe, maybe butts like, but it was an all white, like nice button up. And he signed winter swim, Steve Curtis on the back <laughs> shoulder. Like, you know, we're like out and about and he, he thought That's it was awesome. funny that, you know, I'm going to sign Mark's shirt. And, <laughs> and then, you know, whatever, 20 years later, we're in a boat together. So how it's cool weird how that? things happen like yeah. that. That's great. Yeah. So then the next race for you guys was, um, wait, wait. Yeah. It was the, the lake race. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Shoot yeah. out offshore. Yeah. And calm waters. You know how I like that stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So calm shootout waters offshore will... is the new name for it because the uh, organization committee that run the Lake of the Ozark shootout is now handling that race. So the yeah. now the moniker is known shootout offshore. That is why it's called that. And how was that for you? That was uh, back to you running triple duty. Yeah, and uh, it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't hot and. Rusty and I didn't have a lot of test time, but we knew what to expect. And it kind of, it kind of happened the way that uh, I thought it would. I thought we would be a little more up front, but since we hadn't been any of the previous races, we had to start like I would get. I'm thinking it's twelfth or thirteenth position, and uh, we are battling for fourth. For you know, pretty aggressively, we got around. Uh, uh, JS racing and they were giving us a good battle and the uh, Connor Langham was doing a hell of a job holding us off and we finally got around them and then uh, Billy Allen was come up behind us and we were in the uh, I guess you call it the north turn turn it was a three point turn down there by the mouth of the gravoy and the second buoy was the buoy that you really had to pay attention for, to to not set the boat down too quick or uh, it, it tries to hook and it was it was uh shitty because we sat it down and it hooked on me and it was my first time missing a buoy in the stock class uh in all my years of racing and and at that point uh bill allen was pushing us and i think he was probably going to get us maybe and and because i think there was like three laps left but uh at that point we just kind of pulled up not pulled over. We kept it wide open, but gave them a lane to where, uh, and they were able to get around us pretty easily at that point and go down just due to the fact that I knew we missed a buoy, you know, I was going to let the, uh, the, the team behind us go, yeah. uh, you know, and we're on the radio and I'm freaking motherfucking myself and all that, you know, to everybody and, and being, you know, being mad at myself for missing it. And, you know, Rusty's like, well, I said it down. Yeah. He was being apologetic too. But I mean, when you grab that, when you're trying to time trimming it down to putting a, you know, input into the wheel and the wind was coming the direction to where you, it was, it was just basically, the worst case scenario to where the boat just tries to hook. And it was either take the buoy right down the tunnel or just go inside of it. And then, you know, take your 30 second penalty. So I yeah. forget what we ended up in that boat, maybe uh ninth or 10th, something like that after the penalty, after the penalty. Yeah. Yeah. After the penalty. But uh yeah, one of the cool parts about it though, was uh Max and Tom Sanderfoot racing their new, yes. uh, sign shark boat one mm -hmm. that we had uh rigged that was actually you know uh a, a 32 one of the newer doug 32s and we had rigged it and had it for sale they bought it they wrapped it we put the uh new windshields in it and we did all the rigging and they're out there battling it with people and you know it was literally that weekend was their first time in the boat so you know i expect good things out of those guys because they were jacked and uh Ian and, 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 uh, uh, Rusty and Jason, Bill Meyer, all them, it was basically like, I mean, they're in our tent too, you yeah. know, is one of those things like, uh, take your customer and, you know, you know, take care of them and let them know all everything that you've done to try to get up top. And, and they did good. Uh, well, I got to yeah. tell you, I, I spoke to both of them uh, before before the race, and it was so cool talking to them, right? Because they're a father son duo. Uh, the son is on Max is on throttles. He's what twenty one. Yeah, he's young. 
And good uh, kid though, man. Great kid. I mean, yeah. I, I, I've like, you know, could tell he's been raised right. You know, dad, dad and mom have, have done a good job with him. So, yeah. And Tom, uh, the dad was so geeked up about getting uh, being able to go out there and race with the son and so i actually brought them up to the broadcast booth and uh bob and rod smith uh, interviewed them and uh they were so excited and super proud of them they're out on a course what I th- there was like 13 super stocks out there yeah. that day and uh they didn't finish last i think they finished like third or fourth yeah they were run but one behind us but i yeah i remember at the point that we missed the buoy and we i mean we were still run just for everybody knows we weren't laying back after we knew we were going to get a penalty. We're still a hundred percent, but it's like you can run a different line, not to interfere with guys behind you because you know, they probably haven't missed a buoy and you know, it gives them a better shot. But, uh, Rusty's giving me and, you know, feedback, you know, like, uh, Tom's battling with, uh, Tom and Max are battling with these guys. Oh, they just got around them. You know, it's like, so we're <laughs> watching the race behind us, you know, to, to see, uh, you know, to see how our teammates yeah. are, are doing basically. Yeah. And it was, it was a cool deal. I, I saw Tom and Max, uh, just this past weekend in Wisconsin at the, at the new event, Big O Big Bet. And, uh, they told me that Rusty told them, it's like, oh, if you guys finish in last place, don't even bother coming back. To me. I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Rusty comment. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I guess Rusty's still talking to them because they oh, didn't yeah, finish yeah. last. I know Rusty said, well, even after our penalty, he goes, well, at least we still beat Tom and Max, you know, just <laughs> the, the camaraderie in the pits. And I think that they're going to race Sheboygan in, in August and that, uh, Rusty's going to go up and help them out and crew that's for awesome. them and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. They're so jacked. So it's very oh, yeah. cool. But despite- talk about power boaters. I mean, they've got outer limits. They've got, you know, a Pavati ski boat that I think they just brought down. It's going for sale. They've got a 360. I mean, they've got some performance boats and, uh, you know, it's cool. They got that they big were- fishing boat, right? That they took yeah, down yeah, to yeah. wedding too. Yeah. Yeah. That was down there at the wedding. I think that maybe a yellowfin. Yellowfin, or- I think. Yeah. 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 So despite, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, despite the penalty and, you know, the less than optimal position in the Superstock uh, boat for Performance Boat Center, your other two teams. Yeah, we did pretty good. Uh, <laughs> we were uh, awarded second place at the event in Supercat. Uh, but then I later on got th- that was taken away and we got moved to third because uh, Dirty Money appealed their uh, reckless driving uh uh, penalty and yeah. the, disqualification. I, the, yeah, disqualification. And they then get, gave that back. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, super cat was, you know, we were seeing some crazy numbers. We're seeing, you know, uh, we were propped a little too tall and Johnny and I were, you know, we knew it from the get go. Uh, and Billy and us were racing. I mean, there's times to where it was like, I could feel the boats touching that we weren't actually like, hitting hard but i could feel the boats touching each other when we're going on the straightaway so yeah yeah good racing there in the super cat class uh yeah there was a crash in turn the first turn that uh early in the race right great early in the race where i actually received my first yellow flag so lake of the ozarks was eventful i'm getting penalties <laughs> for missing buoys and i'm getting yellow cards which i'd never got one of those and uh <laughs> and this is your backyard yeah i mean you know why not yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean literally, I mean not I couldn't throw a rock that far, but it's probably that direction about a mile for yeah. till the turn. So uh yeah, so that was uh that was eventful. I mean we got podium either way, second place or third place, got a podium yeah. in Super Cat. But then in class one we were hauling ass. Uh first place, yeah. Yeah, first place. Uh, twice first place. Twice. Yeah, because they raced with, us two races. With Tyler, with Tyler in the boat. Yeah, yeah with Tyler. And for, those that, for those that don't know, Tyler is recovering from back surgery. Right? Yeah, and this guy's tough as nails. I mean, literally, y- you can see in his walk and everything, like he's trying to be ginger and, and do the right thing. You know, now for the past couple of weeks, he's been able to get on the Peloton and the low impact stuff. Uh, but in the calm water races it's not as violent and when you have the seats that we have in there that are like wrapped around you and all your harnesses on he had a back brace and all that stuff going on he uh 
he did great i mean yeah we were 155 miles an hour down the straightaways yeah you, you guys know, were into the flying. wind and yeah it was it was flying and it uh and it felt good and it was our first class one victory in in our i don't know how many races it's it's the middle of so a season and a half to get our first win yeah and not only one but two and i i knew that we were going to be the contender i mean even though defalco is super fast i mean this boat will turn and go like go gangbusters on the calm water so yeah and it's fun so explain to us uh how tyler was number one being back in the boat right because he had been he had sat out uh most of the season well the whole season so far since that oh, race yeah. and yeah. then um uh, and then ca- capturing the first class one victory oh he's jacked yeah you can go back and see any of those videos like uh i don't know awesome and a lot of the this is you know the and and just you know when you're the guy writing the checks and you know and the your guy that's losing sleep at night uh wondering how to make this boat that you decided on because ultimately being the team owner you make all the decisions i mean people can give you input but you've got to take that input and you know use it one way or the other use it as a uh you know an influence on the decision you're going to make or right or say that 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 input was stupid and i'm not going to do that you know or so ultimately uh for him extremely excited because you know my boy got to get a couple wins and uh get to show off his uh class one project that is uh i mean it's fun to drive it it really is and now that uh now that that race is over and we've learned so much in those first two races being cocoa beach and uh and Lake Race, the boat is getting a lot of changes done to it now, and it's supposed to be done, you know. In the and next then, and days. then, most, I mean, also very important is is making your corporate sponsor, Monster Energy, happy. Yeah, which yeah. they must have been over the moon. Oh yeah, so yeah. Casey I and mean, the team it, it, all excited. It is, it is, and we had a film crew. Uh, I can't remember Paul's last name. Paul, man, I got to look it up now. But you guys should <laughs> see the stuff that that he has really done uh it's paul t paul uh, man i'm not gonna be or t a u b l i e b and some of the things that he's done as far as a director and a and a videographer uh is unbelievable like uh I mean, he's. It says known for here, and and it's like uh, ground swell, uh, bloodline, uh, blink of an eye. Uh, there's a movie called The Vow, which I guess it's a chick flick because my wife's and said she loves it. No regrets. <laughs> the J. B. Mooney uh, story, The Bull Rider, uh, which is wow. a, I think a Netflix deal. Big. So. This guy's asking questions, you know, that are really off the wall compared to a normal interview. You yeah. know, like, have you take, have you ever hauled any drugs in your race boat? And you know, you're like, <laughs> no, you know, you know, it's stuff like that. But, but I guarantee with us and they, so in testing of the class one, we broke a prop shaft and threw one of our brand new badass like the one propeller that we had basically had built and planned to use in this race into 60 foot of water and like the ozarks you know which is like yeah well we're not getting that back and oh by the way we got to switch drives and do all that and make it back for qualifying in an hour and all that stuff so uh uh-oh the shit show just rolled in (laughs) what's up sweaty here they come (laughs) Uh, You're... so anyway, the, uh, that he loved the, the drama and the, uh, the, I don't know, the, the whole law, the agony of defeat and then yeah. come back and win, you know? So he's, he, he loved that to where, yeah. man, we're really high and mighty and, and we're doing, you know, we're doing videos with them to where they're like, whole, they, I, you know, these guys are like live in LA and they, you know, 
like they were blown away with people from Lake of the Ozarks, like because they're like, man, these people invited us over to like sit on their dock and video off the dock. And, you know, then they offered <laughs> yeah. us food and stuff like that. And <laughs> he goes, if we were to, if we were at my neighborhood in LA, they would be asking how much money are we going to pay them to be able to video <laughs> off of their property, you know, stuff like that. Right. He goes, this is awesome. Yeah. And, uh, but then to be people that have never been around, Hey, it's enough power sports, uh, to be around our power boats and to be out on a pontoon boat and I, and us doing, they're like literally in our headsets, like, okay, turn left, come at us. Okay. Now turn it. And you know, we're just buzzing by them and they have like cameras. I forget, but Jason, all the, uh, Jason, Matt, we're all like geeking out with the the amount of uh, the camp. The, like that's an eighty thousand dollar camera, you know, Damn. stuff like that. To where yeah, yeah. it was mostly Jace because he's like talking about you know the camera lens and all that stuff. Now the dogs are going. <laughs> yeah, I know you love this. It just gets so my much. It gets so my much. blood freaking boiling. You guys, <sighs> yeah. You love to see my blood just boil because I'm sitting here on the camera and I can't go over there and kick a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hush. Uh, oh, it worked. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Uh, Paul and his crew uh, literally, you know, following us around during that race and then losing, having the drama of losing the prop and the propeller and the, all that. And all the guys over at Performance Boat Center to rally together and get us going. And then we actually was he, rained, was he... out, rained out on Friday afternoon and then had the double race. So I had four races on oh, right. Saturday. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it really wasn't triple duty it was quadruple duty and we did the math on sunday i mean i could be off by a couple miles but it's like 320 miles of racing around uh a four mile course of lake of the ozark Jeez. so i was i was done did I that had, yeah had did that wear on you well not really as i could have kept going but you know it was it was funny on sunday uh we were actually you know, done with the racing and all the kids, I think it, it was some, some holiday or something going on on Sunday. Something was going on to where we were all heading out in the bass boat with all the kids. And we were actually on the course and, <laughs> uh, I had a beer in my hand, you know, and cruising down the lake. I'm like, well, I'm back on the course, you know, one day <laughs> after, you know, I miss you made a video. It's pretty funny. Like, you know, doing another lap. Why not? <laughs> 300. Three hundred and twenty miles and whatever. Yeah, but anyway, it was, it was it was all worth it. And and uh, for you know Tyler and Lindsay and the crew and Billy worked really hard, and so did Dave and Craig and everybody to get us through all those laps. And just like with Cocoa Beach, you know, get us through all those laps and and uh, come out on top uh, with the the class one was awesome. Yeah, no, it was it was really a stellar performance. And uh, going back to what you had said earlier about your arch nemesis, Dirty Money, uh, they ran a spectacular race in the Supercat mm -hmm. race. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Except for the front. first turn where they missed right. the buoy and Bill right. and all them will still like argue with me or whatever. But I'll, <laughs> this is my opinion of my Boats and Bros podcast. They missed yeah. a buoy. So yeah. just like I missed a buoy in Superstock. So move over but yeah. due to the fact that i guess due to the fact that there was a wreck behind them mo missing a buoy and the yellow flag coming out before the 
I, I don't know how the rule works. Before the start finish line, before the first lap had been officially scored, mm -hmm. the fact that they missed a buoy was not counted as a penalty. So, got it. And, so I, and so I'm probably saying something wrong and everybody be shaking their head, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, I miss a buoy. I'm moving to the outside, but, but regardless, uh, the, they filed the protest, uh, to file the protest. There was a vote by, there's a committee. I don't know the acronym. It's like, uh, O O R C R. What is it? O R C I think it's O R C. I yeah. Think. And that O R C committee committee is like, uh, the, the leader of, I don't know if the leader or a chosen person from each class to represent class representative that has a vote. And, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously they reclused, uh, or recused, uh, Tyler from it because, you know, through the class one, because he's the class one representative and he is the super cap representative, but mm -hmm. they recused him of his votes due to the fact that he has votes in those classes. Oh, that's in that class. in it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So conflict of interest. So anyway, yeah. Ultimately, anyway, they, so they overturned the disqualification and awarded dirty money. First place, first place to dirty money. Yep. Yeah. Which, uh, so then you they, fast forward. Yep. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So then they got their, their win. Yeah. First win, uh, as a team, yeah, when, yeah, Britain, I mean, they're right Britain there. Bill. I mean, yeah, by default, I mean, they're, they're going into the, the last lap. I mean, we got another story coming up about the next race, you know, but That's yeah, where I was they're, going, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're leading, they're leading or right there. And then, you know, something takes them out, whether it's a mistake or whether it's fuel or whether it's an escape hatch. So, so talk about the escape the very next weekend after Lake of the Ozarks, you guys <laughs> all head to ocean city, Maryland. Yeah. Which uh, is a badass venue. I yeah. mean, I never thought that I would think like Ocean City, Maryland. I kind of think of it. I, I, I had never been there. So I kind of picture it like, I don't know what I picture Atlantic City or, you know, something maybe dirty and ran down or something. And I'm not saying this because, uh, you know, it's just an image that I have of it. I'm not d dissing these sure, areas. Right. I just just something that I I kind of, you know, put in my head because I've been to Jersey and stuff like that and. But anyway, Ocean City, Maryland kind of re reminds me of almost Michigan or Wisconsin where we're at, you know, beautiful, you know, flowers and all, all the, everybody takes pride in their properties. And there's this boardwalk along the beach that, I mean, I'm not talking like four foot wide. I'm talking like they could drive cars down it. So this boardwalk of, you know, like 16 foot wide boardwalk of, for, I don't know five, six miles. And wow. the, every morning they're, they're grooming the beaches and, you know, it's gorgeous and talking like, um, uh, fun parks and a million restaurants, because, uh, when we were there, they said it's about two weeks before season really gets started for this area. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it, it was awesome. It was, it was dated as far as the, like, you know, the properties is be like going to new Vegas versus Fremont street. Yeah. But it was like, everything was clean and nice. So it didn't matter if it was dated or not. Yeah. That's uh, great. Go there and, uh, uh, go out and, you know, go through all of our, our, you know, one week after. So, and we're only super cat didn't have to focus on any other boats. And now that we're back to the rough water, uh, Johnny's back in the boat because Tyler couldn't have done it just because of the injury or the surgery and, uh, go out. And Johnny also wanted to go to the schism or not. So I shouldn't say that the Peter schism wedding or, re, or reception. rehearsal reception, reception back in at the lake. The Ozarks. Yeah. Back at the lake. And so he was, we, we were testing on Saturday and then he was going to fly back to the reception and then fly back and then make it there for the race. So, wow, he did that. I mean, but it was a little stressful because storms came in and, uh, on Sunday morning, but anyway, in testing, it was, uh, it was a little bumpy, uh, maybe 117, 120 miles an hour in the super cat. Uh, but to to give a little bit more insight, we we're we we're running hard. Tyler was really uh, playing a team owner, team 
manager spotter, you know, really doing lap times. And he's, he's telling us as we go out, he's like, okay, I want you to run hard for two laps. And I mean, you tell Johnny Tomlinson to run hard for two laps. It's, it's hard. Yeah. And, uh, we did. And, you know, we got some decent lap times, different propellers, you know, I think we moved some weight around and, and then, uh, on the last, like literally the last hundred yards of the last lap, we trip it and then put it in on its nose. And it was the closest we've been to going over. I mean, <laughs> and it was wow. funny inside the cockpit. I wish you could see, hear the onboard. It was like, literally like, oh, you know, man, you know, after we're back going straight and we're going 40 miles an hour, it's like, geez, that was close. We about dumped this thing. And Johnny's like, well, we've been through worse. And I'm like, well, <laughs> duh, we flipped before, you know, that's kind of a dumbass thing to say right now because, <laughs> you know, it's because, yeah, obviously we've been through worse, you know, yeah. but, uh, but that it, was, was, it was funny, but he was just trying to like talk me down. Like, yeah, that wasn't <laughs> right. that bad. But in the process, I had wrenched something in my, like my rib cage on my, right side in the back like and i think it was from like trying to correct the wheel to save the boat i think i just pulled something it, it's 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 about 90 percent back now but it was it was bad enough on saturday night like we're going to cvs and we're going into the oh, back wow. pain section and we're getting hot packs and thermo I don't know, whatever shack whatever. shows in that commercial, you know. This podcast is powered by Speedboat Magazine. Subscribe now at speedboat.com for nine power-packed current issues a year direct to your mailbox.